going on guys? Uh, back out for another Prairie Dog Western episode. Um, I'm headed out. It's a little, let me see, it's a little after seven. I'm gonna try and get there before the Prairie Dogs are up. That way I can get set up and by the time they come up out of their holes, I'll already be there, ready to start shooting them. I noticed that um, that's the best tactic. I get more of them that way. They're less weary if I'm already there when they pull up or get up from their holes. So today, <clears throat> um, I've got the impact tune for a really cool round. This is might be one of my new favorite rounds. It's a 25 cal. I'm shooting the 34 grain varmint knocker. Um, it's an extra large hollow point, and um, I'm shooting this thing at 1,055 feet per second, and it is very accurate. Um, it's got a huge hollow point. Uh, here's some pictures of it, what it looks like. As you can see there, it's just huge. The hollow point's like a cup hole. So uh, that's definitely gonna do some damage. I'm really excited to get these onto the prairie dogs, you know, shoot them, see what it does to them. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be very ethical, very humane and quick. So uh, we should have an action packed day. As long as the prairie dogs come up and they're not scared, we should be able to bust quite a few of them. I've got some um, scope tape put on my scope um, for, for dialing. So hopefully we'll minimize the long range misses and uh, we should have a good day. So let's skip to the part where I'm in the back of the truck. Good morning guys, I made it to the back of the truck. Um, I've already got a few out there. They're kind of yipping at me. I'm just getting some ranges. Uh, we're gonna be using the 34 grain varmint knockers with the extra large hollow point. And uh, I can't wait to get one and see what it does. So I've got a few already out there, kind of long range. <clears throat> actually got my first one at 113 let me get stuff set up and uh, we'll start shooting all right guys we've got one out there it's 110 yards I'm gonna give him eight minutes of angle and we'll see if we can put a hit on him that guy a good one it looked like it hit him hard but he was able to crawl back into his hole so I don't think we'll be retrieving that one but um looks like these varmint knockers are gonna be doing the trick you know they're that one hit him pretty hard <laughs> all right let's wait and see what else comes up all right guys here was the setup we're using today we got the Johnny FL Ronin the Athlon Aries ETR the FX Impact Mark II Power Plenum, Slug Power Kit, Huma Transfer Port, Huma Pellet Probe, Sabre Tactical Rail, Ergo Zero Angle Grip, Sabre Tactical Cheek Riser, and a Sabre Tactical Buttstock. Side Shot, uh, Scope Cam, and a GoPro Hero 7 Black with an Even Vision uh, ring, uh, lens in there. And, um, All right guys, I got one out here at about 100 yards. It's hard to range be between 100 and 110. I want to play conservative, give him seven and a quarter minutes of angle. There they are. Okay. Looks like I missed that one right. All 
All right, I just wanted to talk about that shot. Right here, um, I actually hit at four minutes of angle high, um, right where I was aiming. And I didn't, didn't get a good range on him. He was 90 yards out, and uh, I did hit right where I was aiming right here. And uh, luckily, he stayed still long enough for me to take a follow-up shot. But um, I wasn't able to see all this until I watched the slow motion. Okay. Another thing I wanted to point out with this shot uh, here in the slow motion, you can actually see the vapor trail. Um, I don't know if any of you guys shoot centerfire powder burners, but uh, when shooting long range, you can see the, the air wave, the shock wave created by the bullet as it travels down range. And if you watch right here closely, you can see the air being pushed out of the way. Right there, you can see the, the little shock wave that it sends going all the way down range. And these are shooting at 1,055 feet per second, but uh, just something that I noticed that I don't usually notice on the slow motion. Okay, that one took a few shots. <clears throat> Looks like the first one was off to the side. Second one, I hit him right in his nose. And then uh, that last shot put him down for good. All right, let's see what else comes up. Busted that guy. That's uh, well, that was about 50 yards. I've got several of them out there. They're in a bad angle. I might reposition here in a little bit and uh, take some shots on those guys that I can't reach right now. But they're out there running around playing. So let's see. Uh, hopefully the action continues. I guess I got one at 80 yards. Let's see if we can get a shot on Him. All right, that was a, a real good example of what these slugs will do. They hit hard. You know, that's, um, I think they're like a little bit above 80 foot-pounds. Here's the number. I'll put that right down there. That's what the foot-pounds is. And uh, as you can see there, it just turned him sideways and stopped him dead with the chest shot. So these, these things are definitely going to be doing good. I've got a coming, an upcoming trip. I'll be headed to Colorado with a few other YouTubers. So you guys definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, it's going to be like a three-day trip. And uh, hopefully we're going to be going where there's hundreds of prairie dogs. All right, well, let's continue to wait and see what else pops up. All right, this guy popped up real close. And I didn't have time to switch on the main camera. He's about 40 yards away. And uh, I made quick work of him before he could duck back down. Um, the camera, uh, sorry, the, the scope was a little bit out of, out of adjustment, but um, you can still see the slug right before it hits him in the head, and he just lights out. I guess I got this guy at 120 yards. Man, I don't think you guys could probably hear that, but that was a, a hell of a pop.
that was um, 122 yards. I gave him three minutes for wind. We've got a, a right to left hand wind. At this angle where I'm pointing there, it was not quite 90 degrees, more like a 70 degrees into me and um, made the shot. That was a perfect shot. Um, a couple days ago, yesterday actually for me, um, I was out here shooting with the, um, oh not yesterday, it was a couple days ago. I was shooting with the impact in a 30 caliber using the Hades. And um, at that distance, in these wind conditions, I was getting 15 minutes of wind drift. Um, it was crazy. And right there, uh, I was at the same distance and I was getting three minutes of wind drift. So that's just insane, the advantage that the ballistic coefficient of these slugs gives you when shooting in the wind. is just no comparison compared to pellets. It's you know, three times as much with a pellet. So that's just something to consider. You know, when you're shooting in the wind, you can shoot in the wind. Just make sure that you're using slugs and know what your wind drift is and know what your dope is. Let's see if anything else comes out. All right, guys. We got a visitor here. Looks like somebody wants to come by and have a snack. Now, I am not loaded. This guy is going to go to town on the prairie dog. That's a red tailed hawk. Taking advantage of the Prey dog lunch. Hi right, guys, then I got another one back at a hundred and twenty. We're going to give him some same wind hold. He went down hard. Okay, so that was 120 yards. It might have actually been a little bit further. It looks like um, I was aiming at his head and I hit him in his chest, right below his chest it looked like. Um, I'll document that on my dope. But uh, <laughs> that barman knocker put him down with, with authority. That looked like it hit him hard and uh, he wasn't really moving. Alright, well, uh, the ballistic coefficient, I did some shooting with this round. Um, like I said, I was shooting it at 1,055 feet per second out of the superior heavy barrel, and man, it's shooting perfect. And um, the ballistic coefficient is 0 0.144. That's what I'm getting out of this thing. And uh, I'm at 75 foot, uh, 75,000 foot elevation, so it'll be different from where you're shooting at. But the ballistic coefficient on this slug is awesome. It's outstanding. So uh, if you guys are interested in shooting this, uh, you have to reach out to Dale on his eBay store. You just go to eBay, type in varmint knockers, and uh, all of his stuff will come up. These are the 34 grain, 25 cal, XLHP, extra large hollow point. And uh, let me tell you guys, I've, I've tuned lots of slugs, I've shot lots of slugs, and this setup that I have right here is as accurate as pellets. It's, they're so accurate, they're, they're consistent. And um, I'm going to be using these probably for quite a while instead of my 30 caliber. Um, I just like them that much. So uh, just a bit of advice, uh, some re uh, knowledge there. My, my opinion on these slugs, I really like them. Uh, let's see what else comes up. Okay, I got one here. 100 yards. Let's 
see. All you can see is his head. Nailed him. All right, so misjudged, misjudged on the first shot from the wind, saw my dust cloud in the back, made my corrections, and uh, was able to put one right in his head. You can see that first round whizzed by him and he didn't even know what happened, he didn't even hear it. The old Dunny FL Ronin on this uh, impact is keeping it quiet, so allowing for follow-up shots like, like nothing. These guys, uh, with a little bit of the breeze, by the time you get a hundred yards out, you can't hear the gun go off. All right, so we're doing pretty good. We're bagging quite a few. Uh, the wind isn't so terrible. Um, we're still able to make some good shots and uh, let's see what else the day brings. Alright, had to put two in that one, it looked like he was still moving, and uh, he's close enough where I knew I could get an instant follow up. So not bad, another one down, with the Varma knockers, they are smacking the heck out of him. I think we might get ready to call it quits here pretty soon, we've bagged quite a few, and um, there's some more on this property, off in the off in an angle where I, I can't get a shot due to the, the background. And um, next time I come out, I'll probably be using the same setup. And um, I'm going to get in a position where I can shoot them. And there's, oh, there must be seven or eight of those guys that just stand up there watching me. And I don't got a clean shot. I don't feel comfortable taking the shot on them. Just in case you never know, you know, what's going to happen with the slug after it leaves the what, what you're hitting. So play it safe and we'll reposition on them on another video. So let's see if anything else comes back up. If not, we'll get ready to wrap it up. All right, guys. So this is what I was able to recover. We definitely shot some more. Um, they definitely made it back into the holes. And uh, we had the hawk fly off with one, and um, I'm sure they're gonna eat the rest of them. So if you guys like this video, stay tuned for more. Um, back off. An area where I didn't get a good angle to shoot, and um, there's several more over there, so I'll be out there next time shooting at that direction. And um, I'm sure we're gonna get some more over there. Uh, there's plenty of them just standing there looking at me. That's it'll be a good day when I go out there. Um, I've also got a Colorado trip planned. Um, I'm gonna be meeting with Tay from the Air Gun Podcast. You guys have seen him on my channel before. I'm also gonna be meeting with Jim uh, from Colorado Air Gun Enthusiast. Um, we're gonna go to southern Colorado and there's two prairie dog towns and uh, we're taking everything all kinds of slugs all kinds of guns and uh, Camera equipment and it should be a lot of fun. So definitely stay tuned for that content coming up and um, we've got more varmint hunts coming after that So lots of action for this year. Um, I'm definitely gonna try to put out a lot more content uh, to keep you guys entertained So if you guys like this movie uh, video leave a like uh, leave a comment and please subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thank you